Hey friends, welcome back to Civil Engineering Mastery. In one of the previous video, we had discussed about ACI 318 code. I have received many queries that to continue explanation of this code ACI 318. So in this video, we are going to discuss about the ACI 318 code chapter 2, 3 and 4. So without delay, let's begin now. Let's start with chapter 2. Chapter 2 is meant for notation and terminology. So in this, all the notations has been given. If you see, all the notations are given. All the notations are given in the alphabetical order. So we have started with A and here if you see, it is almost at the end. V, W. Here we are ending up with the notations. And after that, we are starting with the terminology. Means like what is aggressive, admixture, aggregate. So these kind of terminologies are given in this chapter 2. If you look into this, See, effective depth of the section, effective embedment depth, effective stiffness, what is inspection, everything is given here. See, load, self-weight, dead weight, the weight of the structural system including weight of any bonded concrete topping. Load service, what is the service load? All loads, static or trans transitory imposed on the structure or element thereof during the operation of facility without load factors. So without load factors, whatever the load we are using that is service load and superimposed dead load. Dead load other than the self weight that are present or are considered in the design. Load effects and then load path, sequence of members and connections designed to transfer the Factor loads and forces in such combinations as are stipulated in this code from the point of application or origination through the structure to final support location or the foundation. So what is modulus of elasticity? See the pedestal definition is given here. Member with a ratio of height to least lateral dimension less than or equal to 3 used primarily to support axial compressive load for a tapered member. The least lateral dimension is the average of the top and bottom dimensions of the smaller side. See structural wall definition is here. The cast in place structural wall in accordance with 18.2.3 through 18.2.8 and 18.1 or precast structural wall in accordance with 18.2.3. So we need to refer these classes to understand more about the structural wall. Wall pier. Wall piers are vertical wall segment with dimension and reinforcement intended to result in shear demand being limited by flexural yielding of the vertical reinforcement in the pier. So here we are ending up with chapter. In chapter 2, all the notations and definitions are given. So we have just gone through that. We have not get into deep because it's all definitions only. Next, let's see chapter 3. Chapter 3 is for referenced standards. So what are all the standard reference is taken for this code? So that is what given in this chapter. So if you he see here in the scope of the chapter, it is given as standards or specific sections thereof cited in this code including annex, appendixes or supplements were prescribed or referenced without exception in this code unless specifically noted. Cited standards are listed in the following with their serial designations including year of adoption or revision. From class 3.2 the reference standards are given. So this is for American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials AAS. HTO and American Code of Institute that is ACI. So from this American Code of Institutes, what are all the references have been taken that is given here. American Society of Civil Engineers that is ASCE. Next one is ASTM International. American Welding Society. So that's all about the reference standards. Next let's uh, look into the chapter 4 structural system requirement. Let's look into the scope. This chapter was added to the 2014 code to introduce structural system requirements. Requirements more stringent than the code provisions may be desirable for unusual construction or construction where enhanced performance is appropriate. The code and commentary must be supplemented with sound engineering knowledge, experience and judgment. So this is the scope of this chapter. Next one is material. Design properties of concrete shall be selected to be in accordance with chapter 19. So in chapter 19, the design properties of concrete are given. So it has to be selected according to this chapter. 
See here, it is given as chapter 3 identifies the reference standard permitted for design. Chapter 19 and 20 establish properties of concrete and steel reinforcement permitted by design. Chapter 26 presents construction requirement for concrete material, proportioning and acceptance of concrete. So this has been included in chapter 26. Short crete is considered to behave and have properties similar to concrete unless otherwise noted. Sections where use of short crete is specifically addressed in this code as shown in table 4.2.1.1. Additional information on short crete can be found in ACI 506R and 506.2. So if you want any additional information about short crete that can be found by using these codes ACI 506R and ACI 506.2. So in this table, it is clearly given that what are all the topic and what are all the section has to be followed. So for example, if it is reinforcement, we need to use these sections 25.2.7 through 25.2.10, 25.5.1.6 and 25.5.1.7. Similarly, you can refer all other topics and sections as well. Next, design loads. The provision in chapter 5 are based on ASCE and SEI 7. The design loads include but are not limited to dead load, live load, snow load, wind load, earthquake effect, pre-stressing effect, crane loads, vibration, impact, shrinkage, temperature changes, creep, expansion of shrinkage, compensating concrete and predicted unequal settlement of supports and other specific loads may be specified by the licensed design profession. So these are all the loads we need to consider, design loads. So that is given in chapter 5. You can see here chapter 5 is for loads. So that is based on ASCE standard. Next one is structural system and load path. The structural system shall include A through G. First one is floor construction and roof construction including one way and two way slab, beam and joist, columns, walls, diaphragms, foundations, joints, connections and anchors as required to transmit forces from one component to another component. So here it is given as structural concrete design has evolved from emphasizing the design of individual member to designing the structure as an entire system. A structural system consists of structural members joined whatever the members given here. A structural member may belong to one or more structural system serving different role in each system and having to meet all the detailing requirement of structural system of which they are part. Joints and connections are locations common to intersecting members or are items used to connect one member to another. So the purpose of joint is given here but the distinction between members, joints and connections can depend on how the structure is idealized. This is very important. Important. So the difference between these members, joints and connections that depends on how the structure is idealized. So throughout this chapter the term member often refers to structural members, joint and connections. Although the code is written considering that a structural system comprises of these members, many alternative arrangements are possible because not all structural member types are used in all building structural systems. So the selection type of members to use in a specific project and the role or roles these are uh, these members play is made by the licensed design professional complying with requirements of code next class number 4.4.2 here in the chapter for each type of structural member requirements follow the same general sequence and scope including general requirements design limits required strength design strength reinforcement limit reinforcement detailing and other requirements unique to the type of the member. Next, in this class, some material structural members or systems that may not be recognized in the perspective provision of the code may still be acceptable if they meet the intent of the code. Section 1.10.1 outlines the procedures for obtaining approval of alternative materials and systems. 
so whatever the material we use in the structural system that has to be as per the code so other alternative material if we wanted to use we need to follow the outline procedures given in the section 1.10.1 next one is 4.4.4 the design should be based on members and connections that provide design strength not less than the strength required to transfer the loads along the load path the licensed design professional Professional may need to study one or more alternative paths to identify weak links along the sequence of elements that constitute each load path. Next, 4.4.5. The effect of column and wall creep and shrinkage restraint of creep and shrinkage in long roof and floor system creep caused by pre-stress forces, volume changes caused by temperature variation as well as potential damage to supporting members caused by these volume changes should be considered in design. So, we will be getting the creep and shrinkage effect in the structural member so that needs to be taken into account reinforcement closer strips or expansion joints are common ways of accommodating this effect minimum shrinkage and temperature reinforcement controls cracking to an acceptable level in many concrete structures of ordinary proportions and exposures differential settlement or heave may be an important consideration in design geotechnical recommendations to allow for normal values of of differential settlement and heave are not normally included in design load combination for ordinary building structures. So here soil report is very very important that is geotechnical recommendations. So according to that we need to consider this. Next one is seismic force resisting system. So it is given as design requirement in the code or based on the seismic design category to which structure is assigned. In general seismic design category relate to seismic risk level. So soil type, occupancy and building use. Assignment of a building to a seismic design category is under the jurisdiction of a general building code rather than this code. So general building code is also very very important for the seismic design category. So in the absence of general building code, ASCE or SCI 7 provides the assignment of building to a seismic design category. So when the absence of general building code, we need to use these codes is ASCE or SCI 7 for the seismic design. Next, the general building code prescribes through ASCE or SEI 7 the types of structural system permitted as part of seismic force resisting system based on consideration such as seismic design category and building height. So, according to the building height, we need to consider the seismic design category. The seismic design requirement for system assigned to seismic design category B through F are prescribed in chapter 18. Other system can be used if approved by the building official. Structures assigned to seismic design category A are subject to lowest seismic hazard. So when we compare this with the IS code, IS 1893, we will be having four seismic zones. Similarly, in the ACA also, we have the lowest seismic hazard and the highest seismic hazard zones. So design category A is subjected to lowest seismic hazard. Chapter 18 does not apply. Chapter 18 contains contains provisions that are applicable depending on the seismic design category and on the seismic force resisting system used. Not all structural member types have specific requirement in all seismic design categories. For example, chapter 18 does not include the requirements of structural wall in the seismic design categories B and C, but does include seismic provisions for seismic design category D, E and F. In seismic design category D, E and F, E and F structural members not considered part of the seismic force resisting systems are required to be designed to accommodate drift and forces that occur as building response to an earthquake. In this class, the effects of non-structural elements shall be accounted. So let's look into this one. Although the design of non-structural element for earthquake effect is not included in the scope of this code, the potential negative effects of non structural elements on the structural behaviors need to be considered in seismic design categories B, C, D, E and F. So, earthquake effect of non-structural element is not included in this code. We need to consider the behavior, the non-structural element on the structural behavior. 
we need to consider in seismic design. For example, the short column effect had led to failure of structural member and collapse of some structures during earthquakes in the past. And the last one is design verification of earthquake resistant concrete structure using non-linear response history analysis shall be in accordance with Appendix A. So, non-linear response history analysis has to be considered as per Appendix A. So, friends, let's end up here. So, let's discuss the other things in the next part of this video. I hope you all like this video. Please do comment in the comment box. If you like the content, hit the like button. Also, share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe the channel for more videos. Thank you for watching.